All right, welcome back to the project. Um, what we did last time was we got the MP2 test suite set up and we got things to compile. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start digging into what we actually need to do in order to start passing some of the tests. So uh, let's step back and take a bigger, broader view of what we're doing here in this checkpoint. So what we're trying to accomplish throughout the entire checkpoint is to allow users to add a favorite place to the map. Currently, the app uh, retrieves a list of favorite places from the server and shows them to the client, but there's no way for the client to add their favorite place. That's what we're going to work on um, in this uh, in this walk. I'm going to put my hat back on. I think otherwise my hair freaks people out. Um, all right, so uh, so that now currently the server doesn't have this capability. So if I go and pull up the server code, essentially the only thing the server I'm going to look at my dispatch tree down here. Uh, this route is for startup. This is used for testing. The only thing the server really knows how to do is return the list of places. And it, it does this using an HTTP protocol call called get, which is used to retrieve information from a server. So what we need to do here in order to enable this, like whenever I'm building a big feature into some app, I always have to think, how do I break things down? Um, and in this case, we've broken things down and we actually have test suites that test each part of the process. So if I go over here to MP2 test, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the first test suite that I expect that I'm gonna start working on, which is test zero, server favorite places post. And what this test is doing, this test does not use our app. All it's doing is testing to see if our server can accept a request to add a place to the map and uh, accept it properly. So. As always, we'll start with the test, we'll see why it's failing, and then we'll start to develop the code that we need in our, uh, our server.kt file. So when I run this, what I see is that it's failing here uh, on one of the uh, first requests. I don't know what this is doing here. Take this out. Um, and uh, you'll, you'll see that what's happening is it's making a request and it's expecting to receive a, a, a code that indicates the request was bad. This is actually a bad request. This is a malformed request and you're gonna have to handle these cases properly later. But what's happening is it's getting a 404 back, which is a route not found. Now, if you watch the debugging uh, prep video, you know that the reason that we're getting this is because nothing in this route tree matched and we ended up down here and this is where the 404 comes from. So, um, what we need is we need a route called favorite place. Now, what I'm gonna suggest we do, and I'm gonna do this as we go along, is rather than start by handling these invalid requests, let's look at a good request first. Now, let's figure out how to handle a good request. So the right way to do this, because the test suite will, will fail as soon as something goes wrong. So I'm gonna uh, comment out all of these bad requests, and then I'm gonna go down here, and I'm going to work on one good request. Uh, and I can comment out the rest of this too. Um, now, you know, in general, uh, when I submit my code for grading, commenting in the uh, test suite is gonna cause errors. But when I'm working on test cases, it's totally okay to do this. I could also write my own test case with only this content, but in this case, I'll just do it this way. So let's run this again. I'm still expecting it to fail, um, but now I'm testing a good request, one that I expect to work. And this will give me a little bit more of an understanding about how this is supposed to work. And what we're going to do actually is we're going to keep working on this good request until we can get the good request to succeed and then we'll work on bad requests. So that's what I'm going to suggest that you do. I won't do this on the walkthroughs. What I would suggest that you do is you work on this until you can get this good request to, to pass. Then you do some more good requests and then you go back and handle some of the edge cases and corner cases. All right. So I've got this good request. Um, it's uh, making a request to add a place to the map at a certain location, and right now it's failing, uh, and it's failing for the same reason as things were failing before, which is that there's no route on the server that matches this request. If I go over here to server.kt, I can put uh, some debugging right here. So I'll say path, and then uh, let's just print off the path and method. Um, and what you'll see is that there's a request to slash favorite place that's being made with the request with the method post. Now this is new to us and I wanna spend a minute explaining what's happening. So we're using the HTTP protocol, which is this super common protocol used to move data across the internet because normally the server for this application would be you know, in some data center in the cloud somewhere, not in the app, it would be somewhere else. Most of the apps used on your phone communicate across the internet to a server somewhere, right? And you never have to think about where that server is. So 
How do we move data back and forth across the internet? When a client wants to retrieve data from a server, it uses the HTTP request type get. And get typically only provides a path to the server and the server is supposed to provide data of some kind. Sometimes that's a web page, like actual HTML, which is rendered by your browser. It can also be JSON, like we use for the first part of our app to retrieve that list of places to show on the screen. But there are also times when your client needs to send data to the server. Like let's say you're posting on the forum or you're posting on a bulletin board or buying something online or liking or upvoting or whatever. These are all examples of actions where your client is sending some data to the server. And HTTP also supports this as part of the protocol using a different type of request that's called post. So when you wanna get something from a server, you use get. When you wanna send something to a server, you use post. It's gonna be important in a minute because unlike a get request, a post request will typically have a body. It contains content. It contains the information that you're sending to the server. Post is sort of like postal, right? Like it's like wrapping this up in a little envelope and mailing it off to the server so the server can do something with it. In this case, what am I posting to the server? I'm posting information about my favorite place and the server's supposed to take that information and make sure that it ends up on the map. Okay, so what I need to do first here is I need to get a method in here into my routing tree and into my server.java to start handling this. So one of the things that we're um, teaching you in this, uh, I'm gonna call this post favorite place. One of the things that we're trying to teach you in this uh, checkpoint is how to work with existing code, and in particular, how to mimic and modify existing code. So a lot of you will go off and your first software creation job is not gonna be starting from scratch. It's gonna be working on something that someone else has been working on. Frequently, a large group of people have been working on for a long time. So you're not gonna sit down with a blank page, you sit down with a lot of existing code. You may be asked, like we're doing right now, to add a feature. When you do that, the best practice is to mimic the code that's already there and try to make it look as similar as possible because the people that wrote it like it that way. They did it that way for a reason and so your job is to fit into that scheme. Eventually you'll be in charge and you'll get to dictate how things are, but when you're just getting started and you're working with other people, a good thing to do is to try to have your code blend in. You're gonna have to write some new code in this case because we're doing something new, but we wanna make it look and feel as much like the existing code as possible. So the existing code has a route, uh, sorry, has a method to handle the get places route. It's called get places. I'm gonna create a method called post favorite place, right? Get places handles get to slash places, post favorite place handles post to slash favorite place. So I'm reusing the same naming convention. That will also win you points with your collaborators when you start to create software in a group. Um, so for right now, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna return a mock response. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reuse this mock response so that I get a 200 error code, but I'm not gonna set the body because I don't wanna send a list of places. This is not a request for a list of places. This is a request to add a place. And I need to return this. This was one of these single line Kotlin methods where I don't have a body. In this one, I'm actually gonna have to do some work in here, so I want the body. All right, so what I'm doing right now is I'm sending back a mock response that says everything was okay. Um, and now I need to add this to my dispatch tree. And what I'll do is I'll say uh, when path is equal to favorite place and method is equal to post, I should return the post favorite place, the result of running post favorite place. Okay, so let's run the test again. Now, uh, what's happening now? So now there's a failure in a different part of the test. And this is good because it's helping us develop our understanding of what's supposed to happen here. So this part of the test is making a valid request to the server to add a favorite place to the map. This is a favorite place uh, nominated by my dog uh, who likes the dog park. It's not the right coordinates for the dog park, but no matter. Um, and so what should happen? So the server before this request knows about the favorite places that we provided you in the CSV file, and there are 58 uh, of those. Actually, on Java, this brings up the number, but here, if, if we look this up, this is 58. After Gracie adds her favorite place to the map, there should be 59 favorite places. And right now, this is failing because if we go up here and look at what's happening, I am returning an OK uh, code from the method indicating that it worked, but it actually didn't work because it didn't do anything, 
Okay, so this is what we'll work on next. And in fact, you can spend a lot of time and get a lot of this method done by just handling this one test case. Now, eventually you have to uncomment, you have to have to handle the others, and there is some subtlety to that, but a lot of the work is just getting this one done. Now, there's this question of how is, where is the data? Remember I said that post sends data to the server? Where is the data that comes along with this request? And in order to get at it in post favorite place, the first thing I have to do is I actually have to pass it the request. So I didn't need to do this for get places because get places didn't use any data from the request. But post favorite place needs the body of the request. And so you'll see that the request is passed to my dispatch method. I need to pass it to the uh, post method as well. So post favorite place uh, is going to take a request. I'm going to go up here. I need to add that to the header as well. This is what's called a recorded request. This is part of the framework that we're using for HTTP as an HTTP server. So now I have access to the request. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to request request.body. Now, this is the body of the request. The body of the request is the content that the, um, the uh, sender sent along, the client sent along. So let's go ahead and run this again. And we'll see what we're going to start to poke around in there and see what we can find. Um, and you'll see what's printed. Okay, so this is weird. It's a size and then has this text. And now this is looking promising. This almost looks like some JSON potentially. Um, but it turns out that actually what we need is not body, but uh, body uh, read UTF-8. Uh, and this is something that I doubt that you'll be able to figure out on your own, although you can find it in some of the documentation. But I'll just give you this as a hint. Um, so let's run this again. So now let's see what gets printed. And now, now I'm on the right track. Okay, so what do I have here? This is what's being printed from that uh, print statement. I have JSON, okay? So this should be familiar to us based on the JSON we've seen before from our places method and other things. And this is JSON that matches the shape of my place model. This is a place. This is essentially the same data shape that we loaded from the CSV file. Um, so I'm doing good. And this is where I'm going to stop for this walkthrough, but let's talk a little bit about what we've done. We got our new route into the server, and now we have access to the data that we need to make forward progress. I have a JSON string. Sorry, I have a string that contains JSON, and this is a valid request, and this request matches the shape of my place model. So what we're going to do next is we're going to walk through an outline of what this method needs to accomplish. This outline is not code and it is, you know, uh, but it will point you in the right direction. Now, you have all the tools you need to solve this problem. You're gonna have to apply them and you have to look around in other parts of the code and things like this, but you can do this. We have a string that has JSON in it and there's a series of steps that we're gonna take to convert that into data and then examine the data and then do something with the list of places that the server has to incorporate this data into that list. Okay, and we'll work on that in the next walkthrough, or at least we'll outline it in the next walkthrough.